600,000 people go missing in the United States each year. Tens of thousands remain mysteriously missing. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mysteriously Missing. I'm Justine. Welcome back. I'm Karen. Today's episode, we're talking about Decorious Brandon Jones, and he has been missing since October 15th, 2016. This episode takes place in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and that's about 30 miles northeast of Atlanta. And Decorious was last seen at his home at Sugarloaf Crossing Apartments in the 1500 block of Norcross Road. He was under the influence of LSD and in an altered mental state. Decorious ran out into the woods behind his apartment complex, and this was the last time anyone saw or heard from him. Lawrenceville, Georgia is a city in Gwinnett County, and the population is about 30,000, but it is considered a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia. Now, we do know what he was wearing when he left. He only had blue basketball shorts on. He didn't have a shirt. He didn't have any shoes on. He also left behind his wallet, cell phone, and his keys. So he basically just ran out of the house. Um, He is described as a sweet person all around. He is normally very soft-spoken and a very, very caring and genuine person. Nice young man. Yeah. Decorious' Facebook page says he used to live in Columbus, Georgia, where family members still reside. He attended Central Gwinnett High School in Lawrenceville. He left school and got his GED, and he wrestled and played football and still has a group of friends from high school that he keeps in contact with. His date of birth is May 19th, 1996. He was 20 years old when he went missing, and he's 23 now. He's about 6'3 and 250 pounds, so a big guy. He's a large young man. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's African-American with black hair and brown eyes. Now, his family, at the time that he disappeared, he was living with Deona Horton, and that's his girlfriend. And she is now living with her mom in College Park, Georgia, Decorious and Diona were high school friends turned sweethearts and had been dating for about six months. Diona said she keeps an eye out for Decorious when she's back in Lawrenceville, hoping she'll catch a glimpse of him and see that he is still alive and well. His parents raised seven children in Lawrenceville and live about five minutes away from where he went missing. Decorious' mom is Shakora, his dad is Curtis. And he comes from a large extended family. Two of his aunts that were interviewed for the news are Lassa Stringer and Katina Harris. His father's employer is Suwanee-based Millennium Mats, and they kindly offered to pay for the services of a PI private investigator, Jane Holmes, of Patricia Lane Investigations. That's really nice that they did that. Very kind. Yeah. Now, Decorious worked for a waterproofing company. They sealed basements for newly constructed homes, but he did aspire to become a chef. So let's get into the timeline. CBS 46 states he had just moved into his apartment in the complex at Sugar Loaf Crossing Apartments and was living there with his girlfriend, Diona. He and his friends would ride to work together, work all day, and then they'd go home and play video games, smoke some weed, and hang out. However, his drug of choice did change shortly before he went missing. He started experimenting with the psychedelic drug LSD. Jane Holmes, the private investigator, said the week before his disappearance, his girlfriend found out that he came home and said he had done some acid. So now October 15th, 2016, it's a Saturday, and this is the day that he went missing. His mom, Shakora Jones, saw Decorious earlier in the day when she took him to Walmart to get some groceries. He talked to her about how he was experimenting with acid. His mom said he had told her that he was curious about LSD and that it opened his mind. She warned him, you don't need to fool with that because number one, you don't know what to take. This, is, this stuff affects people differently. They talked it over and he listened and responded to his mom with, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, I understand. Shakora recalled, he wasn't acting any kind of erratic or violent or aggressive behavior. He was just talking like his mind had just opened up. His mom then said, I'm thinking it's something that he tried, he experimented with, and then it was going to be over. I never knew it would get to this extent. After she dropped him off at his apartment, she now assumes he did more acid, but she doesn't know how much or where he got it from. Although later it was reported that he may have gotten the drug from a co-worker. And later that day, Decorious had friends over and played video games. 
Those friends, according to P.I. Holmes, said they want, went to a hookah lounge while Decorius left to pick up his girlfriend, Diona from work. Decorius borrow, uh, borrowed a friend's car and picked her up at 9 p.m. at nearby Papa John's Pizza. That was about three miles away. As they were driving back towards their apartment in the 1500 block of Nor Norcross Road, Decorius began talking to her but insisted that she look directly into his eyes from the passenger seat. He stated, look at me while you're talking to me. They started to quarrel back and forth, and as they pulled into the apartment complex, which is about 10 minutes from Papa John's, he parked the car and tugged on Diona. At first, they started to struggle, and she fought her way off him and got out of the car. She ran up the stairs, but he quickly caught her and threw her over his shoulder, carrying her into the second-floor apartment. Diona knew that he had tried acid and believed he might be on it at this time. Tell me that you're not afraid of anyone but God and your mom, because I'm not afraid of anyone but God and my mom, he shouted at her. He attacked Diona, hitting and choking her. Normally, Diona said, he is loving and kind, but that night she was afraid for her life. She was able to get out of the apartment, run outside, hide in the bushes behind the apartment complex, and call 911. She then called Decorius' mom, who lived five minutes away. His mom arrives, assesses the situation, and enters the apartment. Diona knocks on the door, but Shakora instructs her to stay outside and sit on the stairs. Diona hears, her, hears them shouting at each other. When she opens the door, Decorius is holding his mom down, trying to put something into her mouth. He stopped when Diona came and interrupted him. He chased Diona downstairs, and she hid again and made a second 911 call, while Decorius ran out into the woods behind the apartment complex. His mother and girlfriend let him run, figured it was safer that way, that he'd cool off for a while and come back, but he never did. Police officers then filed a missing persons report as well as an incident report for the assaults on his girlfriend and his mom. Then on the next day, October 16, 2016, a warrant was issued for two counts of battery and one count of false imprisonment. His family says Decorius is not one to walk away, especially from his family, which is extremely close and stays connected. That's why they fear the worst. And then subsequently, loved ones spent hours, days, and weeks canvassing the same woods behind the apartment complex. We've been through the woods searching. We've had his cousins out. They've been searching. His parents are just torn up because they can't find him, says Katina Harris, another one of Decorius's aunts. Now, August 31st, 2017, private investigator Jane Holmes of Patricia Lane Investigations in Cumming, Georgia, was hired to lead the search for Decorius. The PI then went on to say, it's not really a cold case with Gwinnett County. I can't really speak for the police department, but nothing added up to them to look at it as a missing persons case. But of course, Gwinnett County is a very busy jurisdiction. You've got homicide investigators working the case, and every day there's a homicide in Gwinnett County. As a private investigator, she said, she can put more time and resources into the case than law enforcement. A year later, Gwinnett County police have searched for Decorius with no new leads in the case. His family has conducted searches throughout the area and has posted more than 1,000 flyers, but to no avail. Because he's over 18, it's really not a pressing issue for the police. They don't feel a crime has been committed. They were real hesitant about helping us search for him because he was grown. And that was Shakora, his mom, telling 11 Alive's Jessica Knoll News. I understand where they're coming from because there are so many young adults doing their own thing, leaving, going, leaving, going. But like parents know their children. If I knew I had a problematic son that may get mad or may get upset or may just disappear for weeks at a time, I wouldn't have been alarmed. But he was not that type of person. There has been zero family contact and no reported sightings of Decorius since that October night. Diona stated, in my mind, I'm like, this is stuff that I see on Lifetime. This is not happening to me right now. It would have been the last thing I would have expected from him. Just knowing him and just knowing his personality. I knew it was the drugs. It had to have been. And it took his mind, definitely. Now, nobody knows where he is. 
So now November 15, 2017, private investigator Holmes conducted a search of the wooded area around and behind the Sugarloaf Crossing apartments where DeCorius was last seen running. A canvas of the area included Tracy Sargent, canine handler, and a cadaver dog search investigator, as well as her specialized canines, Chance and Draco. We scheduled the cadaver search because Tracy and I both thought, well, if he's deceased, he's probably going to be somewhere nearby and maybe he got hurt in the woods. When searching, you're envisioning a body, but after three or four months, it's not going to look like that. Plus, we had fall and the leaves and the pine straw. He could easily be covered, Holmes said. Tracy has been specializing in missing persons cases for a quarter of a century and has been called upon to investigate more than a thousand cases, and she does so at no charge. That's very generous of her. It is really nice. It's my life's work. It never occurred to me to ever charge anyone to help them with this. It was a passion, and I was very lucky to find that very young in life and to be able to use this passion and help these families through their darkest hours. Tracy and her team combed through the wooded area which bordered Georgia State Route 316. However, after hours of scouring across the land, they found no evidence of Decorius. Ultimately, Sergeant and Holmes ruled out the area for any further leads to his whereabouts. I was thinking that for sure we would find him, Holmes said. It's been very frustrating. Now April 8, 2018... Decorius's father, Curtis, begs anyone with information to come forward. He has a family that loves him, and a lot of people are hurting because they don't know where he's at, his father said. There's a void in our lives without him. And here's an audio clip of Decorius's dad speaking. I just say, Decorius, come home. We love you, man. And, you know, you, you know your mother, you, you know your father, you know your family, and you know you have a loving support system all around you, you know, and there's nothing that he could do to make us stop loving him. I just need for anyone with a heart or a conscience give any information that you have about Decorius. If it was vice versa and it was your family or family member, think about how you would feel, how your mother would feel, or how your father would feel, your sister, your brother. I would plead with them in that area to please help us find Decorius. The hardest part, he continued, is just not knowing. And I guess just thinking, what could I have done to not let this happen? And to Decorius, Curtis said, I love you, man. And like I say, there is nothing that you could do to stop that love. And we need you home. Even after the night of terror he put his mom through a year and a half ago, she wants him to know one thing. There's nothing he can do to where he couldn't come home, Shakora said. He knows he always has a home to come home to. Do I think he's dead? No, I do not. I don't feel in no way, shape, form, or fashion that he's dead. I just feel like he's somewhere not in his right mind, but I feel in time he will get back to his right mind and he will come back home to us where he's more like himself. His mom keeps his cell phone active and charged in case the one thing he remembers is his cell phone number. His aunt has not given up hope. He's not made contact with any close friends, none of us here in Columbus, so we're just like a needle in a haystack, says his aunt Lisa. And the PI keeps checking with friends, hospitals, homeless shelters, etc., in case he shows up somewhere. So going through his timeline, what happened to Decorius? When we look at a couple of things, the weather that day or that night, according to the Farmer's Almanac, was 79 degrees as a high in the daytime and 55 as a low, no rain. So that didn't affect him in the first 24 hours. Right. And then getting into the crime in Lawrenceville, Georgia, crime is ranked on a scale of one being low and 100 being high. The violent crime is 17.2 and the average, the U.S. average is 22.7. The property crime is 45.7 and the U.S. average is 35.4. So not a huge difference, but... It's yeah, still something the crime to is not as high as you would think. And, you know, when you think of Atlanta and things in, in this little town, not little town, 30,000 people in Lawrenceville, Georgia, you know, the, the real component here is the LSD. And, you know, that can produce temporary symptoms similar to psychosis that typically lasts between 6 to 10 hours. So he might have, if he took too much LSD, he could have been out for on that trip for quite a while. And it can result in an overdose, and it can lead to severe psychosis. A person having a bad trip might try to harm themselves or others around them, which he did, and they may experience suicidal ideation. 
and make a full-blown suicide attempt. The thing that comes to my mind, though, is, you know, here he is. He's having a really bad episode. And here's a 250-pound guy, six foot three, and they can't find him. Right. And when you look at Google Maps there around his apartment, yeah, there are woods. And I understand them searching him, and they can be very thick woods. But eventually he's going to hit that Georgia 316 highway interstate. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to hit other roads. There's houses around. I mean, there are patches of woods here and there, but it's like he's in a a very, um, a, you know, a, a suburb. Right. I and, mean, even and if there's he houses everywhere. Went into the woods and then walked out, like you're saying, there's, there's going to be people around that will see him. So I don't know. I just definitely think the LSD. But at first, the parents thought that perhaps a friend was hiding, you know, taking care of him or watching over him. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like they were thinking he was feeling guilty about what happened, if he remembered. Yeah. And he was hiding out. But... It's been three years now. Right. And he's still not home. Well, and he, he lived with his girlfriend. I mean, it, they seemed like they had a good relationship until yeah, that episode. Yeah, she really cared about him and thought he was a really wonderful young man. Yeah. And then it he just had a bad trip. And, you know, he probably got a hold of a drug that might have been laced with something bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe later he hooked up with his friends or the people who laced it. Although I don't think he was making good decisions at all. He I was don't just either, out yeah. of his mind. So it's just very strange to me that he never was found. And it's weird that, like, where did he get this LSD from? You know, I think we talked about possibly a friend had given it to him, but... If it's off the streets or really no one knows badly what's in it. laced. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem with taking drugs. When you want to open your mind and have this spiritual experience mm -hmm. and then, you know, you're not, you've got, you've got a dose, a bad dose of drugs. So. Yeah. I mean, he got physical with his girlfriend and his mom. So that is, is not like him. Absolutely abnormal. Yeah. So that's just, I definitely think that second he went in the car with his girlfriend and after having that kind of episode... Something just changed his mind, and he ran out of the house. Yeah, he his mind flipped at that point. the The only thing is, such a large young man. Where is he? Where, I know. Why haven't they found him? Right. It just seems very odd to me. You know, if anyone has any information, please contact the Gwinnett County Police Department at seven seven zero five one three five three zero two. And there is a Facebook page, Find Decorious Jones, and they have about 250 followers. And I did want to add, Decorious' father's company, which we kind of talked about before, which is Suwannee-based Millennial Mats, is now offering a $5,000 reward in this case. Yeah, and that's, this company is really supporting the father, and boy, in a time like this, you need that. This family loves and adores him. He's got six siblings and aunts and uncles and... And it's just um, a sad, sad situation. Yeah. So, I mean, check out our Instagram. We'll have pictures of him up on there. Our YouTube page, we always have pictures on there. But just help this family out. Spread the word. You know, even if you don't think you have that much information on this, I think the police want anything that they can. Somebody should have seen him. Right. I mean, it's uh, even, you know, it was nine o'clock at night that this episode happened. And if he's still having a bad episode even into the mornings you'd think somebody would have seen him and him walking around without a shirt and shoes yeah. like it's someone had to obvious have, stress right. that he's not gonna be not noticed right so if anyone has any information please reach out but just share this help this family out and we appreciate you guys listening yes let's bring decorious home thank you so much to all of our listeners thank you